What's up fellas? Today I'm gonna be giving my two cents about politics and specifically equity politics and what I think about that. Equity, equality, the differences as far as I know, what we what we have, what we need, that kind of thing. So I'll start by telling you guys what I know is equity. Equity means equality of outcome. So, you know, we all have the same amount of money. We all, I guess, work the same amount of hours. We all just do the same amount of stuff. Um, I don't know about you guys, but that doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> that doesn't sound very, first of all, possible. Second of all, um, good. It, you know, it, I mean, naturally, some people want to work 70, 80, 90 hours a week, while some people want to do the bare minimum. And if we all, ha if we were all on the same grounds, then that's that's not good. Um, equality, to me, or from what I understand, is uh, equality of opportunity. Now, a lot of people think, especially. Uh, especially liberal people and I'm not trying to like bash them or anything but from what I understand people a lot of people think that we don't have a quality of opportunity here in the United States and I'm I'm not so sure of that I'm not convinced of that you know uh, if you want to take the traditional route of going to college and getting a job I think just a a anybody can do that you know you just you just, you just got to do it. Uh, you just apply to the colleges, take some loans if you can't afford it, get the degree, pay off the loans with the job, and then work until you retire. I don't know why we're all talking about a quality of opportunity. Like we don't have it yet. Um, now, what people, what people refer to when they say that, that we don't have a quality of opportunity is... Uh, I guess family, family structures, and that's true. I mean, we we don't all have equal family structures, um, and it's it's impossible for the government to create that either. Um, there's always going to be people without fathers, always going to be people without mothers, people without grandparents, people without siblings, people with too many siblings, people with you know it, the family structure is never going to be the same for anybody across the board. Um, and I guess you could argue that somebody born in Section 8 housing with a mom who's addicted to crack uh, and no other family members and six siblings is probably going to have a harder time. No, not probably. They will have a harder time uh, growing up and becoming successful than somebody, say, who's born in a stable family with parents who aren't addicted to drugs, um, who can afford to feed their kids and all that. But I could also argue the contrary, that somebody born with a silver spoon could oftentimes be worse off long term than somebody who was born into a real struggle that, that never had it easy, you know, because the struggle teaches dedication and grit. While if everything's easy for you from the moment you're born until the moment you leave the house, you're going to have unrealistic expectations in the world and you're probably going to be a nervous wreck. Uh, as soon as you face any real, any real altercations or any real obstacles. So, I mean, even though, even though we're all coming from such different places, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's wrong to think that we need to change that and that we need to make things more equal or more equitable. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just talking to my girlfriend about it and while I'm definitely not of a group of people that is like uh, disadvantaged, at least by the looks of it, right? Um, I, I'm kind of an orphan. I don't know if I'm technically considered an orphan, but I grew up without my dad, never met him until I was an adult. And then my mom uh, got addicted to drugs and left. Um, 
and my grandparents finished raising me and my sister. So, I don't know if that's considered an orphan or not, but basically kind of like an orphan, right? And I really thought about it, and I'm like, well, do I wish anything was different? Do I wish the government gave me, like, a special pat on the back or some kind of extra opportunity to, like, make up for the difference? And no, I don't, because if they did that for me, then they would have to do that for everybody that meets any qualifications of being a disadvantaged youth and you know like since i don't if everybody if everybody had the opportunity because what i want to do is like i said i don't know if i said this before in a video but i want to be a landlord i want to own real estate and uh you know own land and all that kind of stuff and if the government gave me a leg up for that then they would give everybody a leg up for that that met whatever standards and then there's nobody that's like renting anymore if everybody owns a house then who's gonna rent my house if I'm trying to rent it out and make money that way so I think by trying to ensure a quality of opportunity or a quality of outcome I think you're just gonna make everybody worse off everybody who's actually working hard right because then the only people that really benefit are the people that wouldn't get it to begin with ever because they're too lazy or they're not working hard enough or they're not working smart enough um and then it kind of takes away from the people it, and it also takes away from the value of obtaining that thing that you're working hard for so you know i don't know i i think our country has probably the perfect balance of equality of opportunity. And you guys can disagree if you want. I, I would like to hear it if you guys do. Maybe I'm missing something here. But, you know, everybody can get a job. Everybody can save money. Everybody can go to college. Um, it's harder for some people than other people. But I think that's just what makes it more valuable. That's just my opinion, but... You guys let me know what you think. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.